What if I told you that the circle we all know and love is wrong? And what if I told you that this function will change your life, or at least your mathematical one? And it'll turn you into a ghost amongst integration, it'll turn you into a ninja amongst calculus, and it'll turn you into a shadow amongst mathematics. This is the ghost substitution. Now let's start by taking something we all know and love, and let's completely redefine it. Redefining the circle. So let's draw a graph of a circle, and let this graph be the unit circle. Now we have the standard Cartesian equation, x squared plus y squared equal to 1. Now traditionally, if we want to define any point on the circle, then this is done parametrically with a little help from our old friend, trigonometry, giving us x equal to cosine theta and y equal to sine theta. But this is actually working backwards, because sine of theta is actually defined as the opposite length of a unit triangle, and cosine of theta is defined as the adjacent adjacent length of a unit triangle, which is what the x and y coordinates actually are. So it's almost like saying the x coordinate is the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is the y coordinate. And calculating the actual values of sine theta and cosine theta is significantly more complicated. So is there a better way? There is. And to see this, we move away from the triangle to something even simpler, the straight line. Let's start by moving our first point to minus one zero. Now, if I draw a line through minus one zero, then we can see that the different gradients of the line intersect at every point along the circle. Now, the equation of the line is given as y equal to m times x plus one for some gradient m. And to find the intersection point, we can substitute in to our good old Cartesian equation, which gives us a standard quadratic equation with the solutions x equal to 1 minus m squared over 1 plus m squared and y equal to 2m all over 1 plus m squared. And this is our redefined equation for the unit circle. And this is called the rational parameterization of the unit circle. So to double check that this actually plots the unit circle, let's plot this equation on a graph. And we see that we actually get the unit circle, and when m approaches infinity, we get the coordinate minus one zero. Now, can we link this back to sine and cosine, since sine and cosine also define the circle? And the answer is yes, we can. And this is where we first witness the ghost substitution. Now, let's take a point on the circle, and we know by a circle theorem that the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. Now, we recall that this m in our equation is the gradient, and the gradient is defined as the change in y over the change in x. And since this is a unit circle, the change in x is 1, and the change in y is actually tangent of x over 2. And we can see this because tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. This means that the gradient m is tangent of theta over 2, and this is the ghost substitution. Now, this substitution is traditionally referred to as the Weierstrass substitution, named after the brilliant mathematician Karl Weierstrass. And this substitution doesn't only redefine the circle, but it allows us to solve extremely difficult trigonometric integrals with ease. And this substitution has been coined the sneakiest substitution ever. So say you wanted to find the integral of 1 over 2 plus sine x, then the ghost substitution converts this difficult integral into a simple one. And to see how it works, let's take a triangle with angle x over 2 and adjacent length 1. Then by definition, tan x over 2 is the opposite length. Then via the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse becomes the square root of 1 plus t squared. And since we have all the sides of the triangle, we can find sine of x over 2 and cosine of x over 2 in terms of t. And then using the double angle formulae, we get formulas for sine x and cosine x. Now, we also note that the derivative can also 
to be written in terms of t, leaving us with everything being in terms of t. Now all we've actually done is converted our original function into a rational function with lots of cancellation included. So let's go back to our original integral and if we make the ghost substitution we get this, which after simplifying and cancelling gives the integral of 1 over 1 plus t plus t squared. Now this is a standard integral to solve and can be solved through another standard substitution giving us our answer. So here we can really see the power of the ghost substitution. Now if you want to see how we can use the ghost substitution to solve some of the hardest integrals then check out our problem sheet linked in the description below. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe and head over to mathesy.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of my videos.